Hi, I'm Alex from the Southern Ukulele Store and as you can tell I'm starting to lose my voice today. I've got some kind of man flu, the kind of man flu that you'd have too if you just spent your morning restringing the same ukulele eight times for a video. Um, I'm going to look today at the most requested thing on the YouTube channel. We get asked more about low G strings than anything else. In fact, we sell more low G strings as single items than anything else in the shop through the website. Give you an example, the Fremont Soloist, which is our most popular low G string, we sold 500 of them just this year. And the year's not even over. So that's a lot of strings. That's a lot of one particular string. But I'm gonna show you eight today that are all popular and are all suitable for different things. We're going to talk about the Daddario BEB031W first, and then we're going to give it a play, and so on and so forth. Uh, I'll be back in a second. So this first string is the Daddario BEB031W. This is part of a very popular set of strings Daddario make for classical guitar, known as the Folk Nylon series. The Folk Nylon series are bronze-wound classical guitar strings for the basses, with either a mixture of clear nylon or black nylon trebles. I think Willie Nelson is the most famous user, 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 most famous user of the folk nylon strings, but on the ukulele, I found them to be really effective. Lots of people find that silver wound strings are a bit too sparkly, a bit too um, bright, and the folk nylon string, I think, adds a little bit of bass. That's not how Daddario themselves like to advertise it. It's just my perception over years of trying different strings. Uh, the BEB 031W has a fairly rough texture, but it's quite refined. The other thing to note is that this string has a ball end. So for some of you that have pin bridges, this is a ready-made solution, but you can always just snip the ball end off if you don't need one. Uh, the BEB 031W is the most popular string in our custom set of uh, Daddario GCEA baritone strings. But as a single low G tenor string, it's also extremely popular and I found it works sometimes on concerts. I'm going to give it a play and see what you think. Right, this next string is here just to answer that question. When people go, can't I just use a classical guitar string? Yes, yes you can. This is just a classical guitar string. This is a Daddario NYL 031W classical guitar D string. That's the fourth string on a classical guitar. It's the thinnest wound string. And this is a perfectly acceptable low G string for your ukulele. It's not one of the most popular ones we sell because we sell uh, ukulele specific ones as well. But if you can't get to the Southern Ukulele store or you need a string in a bind and you're near a music shop, this is the kind of string that any music shop in the world will sell. This is a fairly affordable string as well, probably the cheapest of the strings we're gonna try today. Uh, silver wound string with no ball end, kind of tie knot string. Uh, but still, sounds great and a popular choice. One thing to note is later on we're going to be looking at the Aquila 16U string, which looks very similar. The question you may have about the difference between the two is that this string is fatter. Most classical guitar D strings are fatter and slightly higher tension. But if you want your low G to be heard higher in the mix, that might be more suitable. I'm going to give it a play. Hope you like it. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okay, now if you've played ukulele low Gs in the last five years, you will recognize this string. This is the Fremont Soloist. It's a polished brass alloy string. So very similar to a classical guitar string, but with a flat wound texture. They call it the Soloist. They call it a squeakless string. It's all of those things. It's a low G string that's not too boomy, not too bright, not too bassy. It's somewhere in the middle on everything. It's a very good, very flat range string. And I find, it, I find it's the most suitable low G string if you are using a low G on a soprano or a concert. I've found other low G strings just aren't quite tense enough or tight enough. Saying that, this string is not that fat. It's thinner than most classical guitar strings you might use and fits nicely in most nut slots. The actual diameter of this string is a 0 0.030 compared to the um, 031s that we're looking at on the Daddario classical guitar strings. And this is the most popular item on the Southern Ukulele Store website. Uh, I'll show you the texture close up. The texture is a goldy color and very, very dull looking. The strings don't look new for very long, but don't be put off. They are tonally sound and a very, very good choice if you're looking to try a low G for the first time and don't want to have to modify the nut on your ukulele too much. Let's give it a play. Okay, another extremely popular low G string. This is the second best selling low G string that we sell here at SUS. This is the Aquila 16U Nile Gut Tenor Low G String. But that's a bit deceptive. It may be part of the Nile Gut range, but this is a wound string with a Nile Gut core. So slightly different to your normal classical guitar strings. It has that Aquila Nile Gut formula in the center, but the outer winding is very, very thin silver. Uh, this string measures at about a 0.028, so it's the thinnest of the wound silver strings I'm going to show you today. And this one was not a string when I was doing the tests you're going to hear that I expected to like, but at the end, this was the string that I decided to keep on my ukulele for what that's worth. It's a great string, it's not too expensive, and it's widely available in most places. I think it's safe to say Aquila are the most well-known ukulele brand out there and this is probably their most popular product. Uh, I'm gonna give it a play and hope you like it. Okay, this next string is made by Worth. This is a Worth brown fluorocarbon low G string. Uh, Worth are 
much like Aquila, one of the most respected names in the ukulele world for strings. People absolutely love fluorocarbon strings. In the last five years, that's really become the go-to material for a premium ukulele string. And the brown fluorocarbons are special because I don't know of another company that produce brown fluorocarbon strings other than Worth, and they have tonally a completely unique sound. They're slightly mellower than a clear fluorocarbon and not quite as stretchy as a black fluorocarbon. When I put this on my ukulele earlier on, I did find this one was the longest, it, it took the longest to settle in. I spent about 15 minutes just trying to get this string to stabilise before I played, whereas the clear string that I'm going to show you next was instantaneous. This is just some feedback on the spot as we go, because it might help you in the future. It's a great string, and when you buy them, they are slightly more expensive, but they come in a double length. So you cut them in half like this, snip, and you've got yourself a spare string going forward. The brown fluorocarbon strings are great for jazz. They're great for players that want a mellower, softer sound, and maybe something that was going to sound a little bit more complex. Uh, I like the brown fluorocarbon strings, but... Personally, I get on with the wound, fluorocar um, wound strings more than an unwound fluorocarbon. If you are into unwound strings though, this is definitely the one you should try first. Let's give it a play and see what you think. Okay, and the next string we're going to look at today is the Worth Clear Fluorocarbon Low G string. One thing I forgot to mention a bit earlier on with the brown is that the Worth Low G strings are the thickest strings we're going to look at today. They are a 0.035 measurement, which is the same as a classical guitar A string. So the same thickness as your baritone D string. Isn't that interesting? So these pull up slightly tighter to a G very well, but... I don't recommend trying to use these as a G on a baritone. They, for some reason, they tend to go a bit flabby the more you pull them, and they don't stretch back quite so easily. The clear fluorocarbon string is brighter than the brown. It's, um, it's more solid in that when I put this on the instrument, it held its tune almost instantaneously. I didn't need to modify the nut to get very good intonation, and I was instantly pleased with how it sounded. The clear fluorocarbon string and the brown, sales wise, one is not more popular than the other. If you don't fancy trying the brown string, try this one. Let's give it a play.
Okay. Now, many of you will have seen this next string as well, and I know what you're thinking, and yes, I did actually manage to get this string on an instrument without it spontaneously combusting, snapping or exploding before I got it up to the right pitch. This is the famous Aquila 72U Red Low G. Now, if you didn't get that joke, you're probably wondering what all the fuss is about. Well, Aquila Reds have a very mixed reputation. Some people love them. Many players keep buying them again and again and again and have done for, I don't know, seven or eight years now. But then many players buy these strings, try them once, and within the first few days they find that they've snapped or they've stretched and they won't go back to the right form and texture. I have not found that problem so much with strings from the Aquila Red series for about three years. But from time to time, some players just have instruments that just don't seem to like the Aquila Reds. The thing about the Aquila Reds that makes them different is the texture. They have an almost cat tongue like texture. So when you tune them up, they're rough to the touch. It's almost like a fine grit sandpaper. Very, very strange, but very precise. So when you slide up the frets, if you're familiar with that texture, it's hard to imagine a different texture. It's a good, it's a good string. Tonally, they're very similar to the Worth Browns. They're mellow, they're suitable for a lighter player, obviously, if they're prone to snapping when you strum them hard. But the longevity of these strings is something that you may want to question before buying them. I like these strings, and plenty of people out there swear by them. And I recommend if you are looking at trying them, just try a set once, and if you find that they don't last very long, try something else next time. Uh, it may sound like I've just talked these down to you. That's not my intention. They sound great, they feel great, as you're about to hear. Uh, let's give it a play, see what you think. Okay, and the last string we're going to try today is the Fremont Blackline Fluorocarbon Low G. This string is interesting. In all the years I've been here and all the strings I've tried and all the sets that I've put together off of my own time, this is the first time I ever tried this string today. I put this string on my ukulele last, having just tried all of the other options available. And I find it to be an incredibly dynamic string. It was louder than the Worth strings but slightly stretchier and it required more patience when I fitted it than the rest of the strings combined. Having said that, when it was on, it sounded great. It had more sustain than the Worth Browns, not quite as much attack as the Worth Clears. And this is a great alternative to somebody out there that likes unwound strings and has tried the Worths and maybe just wants to try something a bit different. Um, the Fremont Blackline strings are Japanese made just like the Worths. I suspect that they're probably made by the same people that make the Worth strings because gauge wise they feel very, very similar, if slightly thinner. Yeah, they're advertised as being thicker than a Worth string, but I can assure you that they are slightly thinner by the time they stretch out. Something to, to look at. The string itself is also more spongy than a Worth string. When it went through the nut slot of my ukulele, I noticed that it kind of found its shape in there and squeezed a bit more than the Worth strings did. Another thing to note about the Fremont is the length of the string. The Worth strings are double length and that's factored into the price. The Fremont is a bit pricier and has its own tone and its own characteristics, but the string is only just long enough to do a tenor ukulele. 
I've not tried it on a concert ukulele, but I have a regular customer that told me that this is his favourite low G for a concert uke. So take that with a pinch of salt and maybe give it a try yourself. Uh, I'm going to give it a play and see what you guys think. Okay, there we have it. We have done eight low G strings today. But which was your favorite? Which one are you gonna try? I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Please share this video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'd love to do more ukulele strings video, string videos in the future when time permits. I'm sorry it's taken me so long to do a follow up to the other videos on the channel about this. If you have any questions, you can email me at alex at ukulele.co.uk. You can call the store on 01202 430820 and chat to any of the team. We all like talking about ukulele strings and we all have our own opinions. You know, these are just my opinions. If you have your opinions and they differ, you don't need to get upset about it in the comments section. I know I feel the same sometimes when I feel really strongly about something, but hey, just let us know in the comments what you've tried and what's worked and what hasn't. And maybe we can all learn something from there. Uh, one more thing to note is I have an album for sale that you can buy from my Big Cartel page or from my website alexbeds.co.uk. Uh, in the meantime, I'm Alex and I'll see you again soon.